introducing you to restaurants from across the state, putting their own unique twist on classic cooking with a side of personality. So you went from a dishwasher to a ski bum to a James Beard award-winning chef. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Soule. Today on Arizona Highways Television, we're talking one of my favorite things, food. Inside this historic Victorian home, a self-taught chef blends traditional French and Japanese cooking techniques to create culinary masterpieces infused with incredible flavors. Okay, this is what I would call a work of art. This is a food work of art. So I'm just curious, I find that you have this personality that it's like you come to Nobu Teeter House, it's like dinner and a show. Mm. You know? Yes. Did, did, you, did you learn that sort of performance ship in um, Benihana? Benihana? You know what, actually, right? I don't have any negative being in Benihana doing uh, dishwasher or cooking in front of a guest with not really cooking, but heating my food and flip the knife. I learned more close to individual American uh, guess what they want. So this is just only one of seven courses when you come here to Nobu Teeter House. My suggestion uh, to anybody who come here to not really having appetizer, entree, dessert, it's not like that. It's a bunch of small bites. Mm -hmm. I think it's different than any other place. And also, uh, not much quantity, but a different type of flavor profile, they never think about it. So this will be Kumamoto oyster. Okay. Tomato water, touch of wasabi oil, and sea urchin for this one's from Maine. Seared big eye tuna with a roasted beef puree has a Pinot Noir reduction. This one is a sea bream, also from Japan, and kind of kelp cure with uh, blue torchon skins and sauce made out of uh, strawberry. It's not like you can just come in here and just eat it anyway, right? There's a method to the madness. So this is a, a chopstick free sashimi spoon. It's my creations of a little uh, non-traditional Japanese style sashimi and meant to be eating out from spoon. So I have to start this way. Yes, because that's delicacy. It's a taste of a uh, oyster and tomato water has a little acid and sea urchin is creamy. That very natural flavor and have a little bit of wasabi oil to finish up kick your sinus. So if you eat something stronger flavor, very hard to identify this particular dishes. That's why I started. I this see. So I, I, I'm gonna just try one of them. How about if I try this one right here? Okay. Just because it's colorful and beautiful and all okay. that. All right, I'm gonna try it. All right. There we go. It's easy. Ooh, that's delicious. Yes, he's a James Beard award-winning chef, but it's his inspirational journey to achieve the American dream that is most fascinating. So I saved back $400 and came to Los Angeles to waiting for my friends to pick me up and no show. I got a hard time to find a hotel room, but they have one room available and I end up to taking a room. It's a beautiful room. It's pretty up high too. Beautiful, beautiful scenario. But it's a, you know, sweets and all my $400 gone fast. <laughs> that was it. That's it. So you went from a dishwasher to a ski bum to a James Beard award-winning chef. Yeah. But you know what? Every one of them, it was filled up with my uh, stimulation. Yeah. Uh, you know, even uh, dishwashing, you get job and being hard to get a green card, ski trail to get, um, passed a bunch of tests to get a certified. EMT, like EMT, I have no idea what EMT was till my boss is considerate to hire me, but you have to get an EMT. Then I was just working Japanese restaurant for 10 years, doesn't speak well. And what's the EMT? Like emergency medical, like CPR. Like, mm -hmm. What's CPR? Right. So it's a very challenge for me to do. I know, but that. look at look at the course of your life. But you know why? Because the passion. So you want to do something. You want to get out from Japan. So I did. I want to get out from Japanese restaurant. So I did. 
So I guess. Um, and so now, what's next? I don't know. I'm still thinking. I mean, right now, I'm I'm pretty much satisfying what is going on. I need to do a little more. And like I say, downtown Phoenix is getting finally getting better. So I don't know what am I gonna do next. I'm Justin Beckett. I'm the chef and co-owner of Southern Rail Restaurant here in Phoenix, Arizona. And we serve American food with flavors and twists from the South. I think when creating our menu, it was really important for us to focus on this southern part of the United States. So we could have things from, from Arizona and our hometown, but we also really focused on New Orleans with the Cajun cooking and the Creole and low country cuisine from the Carolinas and, and barbecue from Texas. Southern Rail's flavors zigzag and wind their way from the South's traditions and influences into the heart of Arizona. We were so passionate about the food that was created in the South of the United States. And all the recipes, all the things we've been taught about how to create these dishes, they come from a sense of soulfulness and passion and, and, and really just being in a kitchen all day and letting these flavors develop. And for me, that's one of the most attractive parts about cooking. I think designing the interior of the space was very important to us. We wanted it to feel warm and welcoming, almost with that southern charm. Charm and comfort, blended with a unique cuisine that, of course, comes with Chef Beckett's passion. The chicken and dumplings is one of my favorite dishes because there's so many different layers of flavors and textures. You have the crispy biscuit, you have the unctuous, rich, smoky sauce, and then the tender bites of smoked chicken and vegetables. The fried chicken has been on the menu since day one and it's one of our pride and joys. We really take pride in, in all the crispy edges and the little, the little nuggets you get when you bite into it. Served with our awesome mashed potatoes and corn on the cob, I mean, we sell more of that than anything else on the menu. But it's not just meat and potatoes. Our cauliflower dish has been on the menu for about a year and a half and it's a home run. People absolutely rave about it. It's this great combination of wood oven roasted cauliflower and then these lighter flavors of pesto and apple gastrique, which is a nice vinegary sweet sauce. And my favorite thing about making vegetables in a unique way is it actually teaches people to like the vegetables that sometimes they're not fond of. The old railroads may have connected the South with the Southwest, but it's Chef Beckett who's connecting the flavors and traditions into a new culinary and cultural experience. My name is Christopher Brugman. I'm the executive sous chef for Mountain Shadows property. And Hearth 61 is the new restaurant at this Paradise Valley Resort. The hearth is uh, the main focal point um, and really the heart of, uh, of this restaurant and kitchen. You know, virtually every ingredient that we use here on property touches the inside of that hearth. Every night we focus on uh, featuring a roast of the day. Um, you know, everything from, uh, you know, whole roasted duck to uh, leg of lamb. Uh, we do a really beautiful prime rib on Saturdays. We have a whole roasted Nyman Ranch pork tenderloin. It's a really beautiful dish and it's, it's complex in many ways. Uh, we marinate in citrus and herbs overnight and then we roast it in the hearth and then uh, slow cook it um, until it reaches a really nice rosy 145. And that's going to be paired with a uh, pumpkin seed mole, uh, which you're going to get a little bit of that southwest heat from. We'll start by putting down the pumpkin seed mole. And this is going to add just an incredible amount of richness and depth to this dish. So here we have roasted shishito peppers. Uh, they've been uh, just finished with a little bit of uh, white and black sesame. Here we've got some ghost chilies. Uh, this is going to provide a, a tremendous amount of heat. Um, typically when I roast peppers, um, some peppers, depending on which ones we use, they get heat activated, some get a lot hotter, some kind of mellow out. So this is kind of one of those surprises. We're not sure how, how hot it's going to get. Then we have a little bit of confit tomato. Uh, this is going to give a little bit of that uh, sweetness and a little bit of acid. We've got a little bit of shaved scallion here. I toss it in some ice water and it really curls up beautifully. 
And here we've got some micro cilantro. You know, it's not just pretty, but it's also functional. I mean, that's what we're trying to go for. Everything on this dish is 100% edible. Got some blue opal basil here. A little bit of mustard flour. And then we're just gonna finish with a little bit of pickled red onion. This has just got so much depth of flavor. It's got so many different elements that are gonna really be pleasing to the palate. That salt, that sweet, that acid. You know, that's really what you're looking for, a really complete, balanced dish. And smoke from the hearth is even infused in their libations. The root of all evil, right? So um, the base for the drink is uh, fresh pressed beet juice. Uh, there's a little bit of mezcal um, and um, a lot of fresh mint. So there's a little bit of smoke, a little bit of earthiness from the beets. Um, it's just a real, real overall, you know, overall winner. Um, and it's a delicious cocktail. Smoky and savory, spicy and sweet. All flavors from the hearth. It's right in the middle of Tubac. We've got great craft beers from all over the country. It's a place where it's not a sit down where you kind of in the restaurant or at a bar. It's, it's casual. So you can come in, grab a glass of wine, grab some street tacos, sit out in the patio, people watch, and that's what really makes it unique. And owner Cliff Wisdom himself is unique. He is a true local. So our original restaurant is Wisdom's Cafe, and uh, my grandparents started it in 1944, and it's located in Tumacockery, and it's about three miles down the road here from, from Tubac. For more than 70 years and four generations of Wisdom's, the original cafe has been serving up traditional Mexican food like carne asada, flautas, and their signature deep-fried fruit burritos. It's like a hot slice of cherry pie. Our idea was to bring our fruit burros from, the, from our big restaurant to Tubac. And all of a sudden this spot opened up right in the middle of town. So we thought, you know what, let's take it a little further. Let's make those more than just fruit burros. Let's do, uh, let's do the street tacos. Let's bring craft beer to Tubac. And um, that's kind of how it's just evolved. And Tubac itself is one of the ingredients. This almost started too, where we'd see a lot of gentlemen sitting on the benches while their wives were out shopping around Tubac, and we thought, wouldn't it be great if they could have a place to sit down and have a beer? This place is unique for just all the unique people that come through Tubac. The majority of the people here are from somewhere far away, and they get to come to a little spot right in the middle of a artist town and drink some craft beer out in the patio. The flavor's great. There, there's so many different breweries out there to choose from. It's huge. Uh, for us, it's huge. It's better than just having Coors Light and Bud Light. You know, you really have some unique beers out there. So we, we try to rotate our taps as, as much as possible. So just to make it fun and interesting. Great place to spend the afternoon. Across the street at the train depot is Maynard's Market and Kitchen. We, we refer to it as the East End. East End. So, Hotel Congress, Maynard's, the Maynard's Market, Club Congress, all the shows going on over there, we're all one company. One company with a lot on its plate. And I mean, there's a lot going on in this East End where we pretty much cater to every demographic. Be it younger kids, we'll have chess events, you know, where you got punk rockers going to shows, you got very preppy people from the colleges going to the club, you know. You, we pretty much have everyone. And then, you know, on this side of the street, we have train goers, we have people going to the symphonies. So I think it's really interesting that we have one company that's so focused on being able to do so much. It ended up turning like this. At just 26, Jared Scott is the executive chef at Maynard's. Sometimes I forget my own age. His French-inspired food is upscale, but not out of reach. I think that a real foodie is just somebody who's interested. There's two kinds of foodies. There are the people who are pretentious foodies who think that they know everything, and there are foodies who just want to enjoy what they have. Uh, and that's kind of where I kind of put myself. And if a burger inside of fries is what you enjoy, it's on the menu. And if you have to eat on the run, there's the market side, open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can do coffee and a pastry, choose from the deli case, or even order dinner to go. And don't forget happy hour. Sip a glass of wine outside or in the bar. There is a lot happening on the East End, 
but Chef Jared still connects with his counterparts further west. I think the influx of restaurants is only going to improve downtown. Um, I always hope for all of the new places to do as best as they can because the better they do, it's going to strive us to be better. It's going to bring more people downtown. It's going to build our reputation just as a community. Um, I, I know some of the guys running the other places, you know, it, we, you'll find that a lot of chefs know each other just in general in every town. Um, we tend to do business with each other. Hey man, I'm out of this. Can you help me out? We're, we, most chefs are very tightly knit. So you'll find that we have actually have a really good sense of community and we've even started doing a lot of events together to kind of bring downtown to the forefront again, which I think it is already. You know, it's, it's kind of the place to be if you're opening up a, a restaurant right now. So I, I'm pretty stoked with the community right now. Arizona is a melting pot of cultures and influences. And at Arizona's oldest Italian restaurant, that metaphor is front and center. A portly chef greets you outside Arizona's oldest Italian restaurant with a plate of neon spaghetti. The vintage sign overlooking Tucson's historic 4th Avenue may only be a half century old, but Caruso's has been serving continuously for nearly 80 years. Back in the 30s, there wasn't much in town. Um, and if you're Italian, what kind of restaurant are you gonna open? It's gonna be an Italian restaurant. So here we are still. <laughs> Four generations of the Zagona family have been making their old world Italian dishes in the middle of the old Pueblo. The recipes that we use today are the recipes that my great grandfather and my great uncle created um, years and years ago. They remain the same, I mean, right down to the brand. Great granddaughter Andy Motskin is now co running the family business, something that just came naturally. I was always in the kitchen. I can remember folding napkins at five or six years old. And she remembers her own family dinners at the restaurant. I can remember my mother used to put chairs together and use tablecloths to cover us up because the adults would be conversing and having a good time and the kids would get tired. And so they'd just push chairs together and make little beds for us. With. And that tradition continues on the back patio where long tables surrounded by trees and a fountain transport you back to Italy and those old style family dinners that it really is something like what your grandmother would make and the legacy gets handed on, passed on to generations. So that recipe is, you know, a secret recipe. So it remains pretty consistent. But restaurant concepts and food can be trendy. You know, we went through the fat, the fat free trend. We went through the no sugar trend, the zero pasta trend. Whoa, thank your lucky linguine. That was just a flash in the pan the extra pasta trend. Um, currently, it's the no gluten. But sticking to tradition is the restaurant's foundation. Sticking to tradition is um, harder for the younger generation who's coming into the restaurant than it is for the older generations. But it is also the foundation. Um, it's what we know that has kept us here, is that traditionally we have a style and we have a way. and. Um, I think people look for that tradition when they're looking to go to Caruso's. And after nearly 80 years, Caruso's is more than just a restaurant. I feel like we are part of the Tucson community. We've been in everybody's life in some way or another and vice versa. It's just one big Italian family. It's always nice to have a restaurant nearby, you know, your go-to spot. So we're going to take you to Arcadia in central Phoenix, to a place where you can walk, ride your bike, but most importantly, you can relax and have that al fresco dining experience. Definitely is a neighborhood spot. Yes, we do have families that ride bikes up. We have people that walk up. It's just really planted in the center here, which has basically made us a part of the community as like a family member almost. It is actually a gourmet food stand. From grass-fed burgers to their shattered fries and signature cocktails, this fast and casual atmosphere will make you want to dine al fresco. 
for our patio, it's just really a no-brainer. Arizona is just such a beautiful place here that it just makes perfect sense for us to offer such a spectacular place for people to come outside and enjoy their meal and cocktails while being outside. But there's also a curiosity factor. So Inco, the name comes from actually the music teacher name of one of our owners in seventh grade. It sounds like in and go, and I think it was derived from that. Mr. Ingo is also an homage to the company's celebration of music, which they think is just as important ingredient as anything on their ever-changing menu. Poppy, jazzy, to world music. Every morning we kind of curate those playlists based on the vibe of the day. Ingo's combines vibe, patio dining, and a unique take on fresh and simple foods everyone loves. Our shattered chips is definitely our take on a French fry, but if you ask most of our guests' opinion, it's better. They are addictive, so be careful. The shattered chips come with our house-made lebni, which is a yogurt-based dipping sauce, similar to like a Greek yogurt. And then we have our lacto-fermented hot sauce, so that's made from jalapenos that we house-ferment. And when they are done, we blend them with all of the rest of our secret ingredients and that's what you end up in your little cup at your table. And we recommend trying it with just about everything but dessert. It's fantastic. Ingo's has quite a few items on the menu that have already proved addictive. Our pickles are a secret recipe, so we can't tell you about how we make them, but we can tell you that they are delicious. <laughs> They're very popular. People order a lot of extra on the side typically, and they are a hit for sure. Another hit, their cocktails on tap. This is an even faster and efficient way to get it to your lips. Our Greyhound is our number one cocktail here. It's been voted number one multiple times, and we actually sell so much of it that we just decided to put it on draft. And then there is their revolving menu. We really just like to focus in on something that is in time for that season and just run with it and make something really amazing that we can offer that we can change all the time. This is our post-it note special. We actually do put it on a post-it note as something that's a unique way to feature it. And what it is is it's our way of being able to change something on the menu on a day-to-day -day basis based on whatever is fresh in that moment in time. Even some of the artwork is in the moment. Our way of kind of featuring something new that's happening in this building. Whatever we want to kind of feature that day, we can just change it up and draw it on there. And dessert is always on Ingo. People are also addicted to the French sea salt chocolate chip cookies on the way out the door. They're always really surprised when they are looking for them and they're like, oh my gosh, these are free. So um, it's, it's a perfect finish to everyone's meal here. It's like another thank you from us on your way out the door and will definitely keep you coming back for more. It really is very Arizona specific and I think it's just a perfect fit here. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. I'm Robin Sewell and we'll see you on the next Arizona Highways.